you can find very few uh, information about that space. So it is the focus of our, uh, our works. It is the focus of our team. And uh, so that uh, we are trying to foster it. Uh, I would like to say sorry for my English because my first working language is, is, is French. And uh, in the area I'm working, I have very, very few moments to, to express my English. So please, uh, uh, you can, I, I, I have to apologize for that, but uh, I will try my best to make uh, you understand what I, am, I want to say or what I want to share with you this uh, evening. And uh, as I, am or, I, I have already said, uh, everyone can uh, put out his uh, questions at the end of, the, of that presentation. So the focus, I entitled my presentation, New Bridge Over the Atlantic. Yes, we all know this ocean uh, between Africa and uh, the Caribbean, the Americas. And uh, we know that uh, during the slavery era, uh, we have many boots taking people from coastal areas of Africa, West Africa, uh, cross the Atlantic and then goes to the Americas uh, at large from North America to, to South America and uh, to those islands in, uh, in the sea, in the ocean. So crossing, uh, uh, building are not a bridge. It is also a metaphor to say that uh, they are gone uh, many centuries ago, but they can be back. Or, uh, so the, the, the bridge links where the walls separate uh, and uh, make distance. So we have to build new bridge or new bridges over the ocean to bring back our brothers overseas, our brothers in the diaspora, our brothers, because our, uh, for all of us, our home is Africa. Africa and uh, Cameroon is at the center of uh, this continent, and uh, we will uh, we're going to see how the guidelines of my presentation is just to make few remarks on the building of the system before the slave trade. How uh, it, how were this uh, this area with the Atlantic system? What are the, the transformations we, uh, we face? And a uh, few remarks about resistance abolitions, because uh, uh, as you all know, no one have accepted to be enslaved without fighting, without resisting, without trying to escape. Escape at the period of capture, escape also through all the steps uh, of, of, of that uh, horrible uh, system. And uh, before concluding, we can raise some challenging questions. Question to us as have Africans, has uh, descendants of Africa, has black people as a whole in Americas, but also around the world, whether you are in Europe, whether you are in Asia, whether you are, you are in the Americas, has a black people, how do you feel? How are you? Are you at home? So we can raise uh, some kind of questions uh, before some conclusion remarks. So I want to start with uh, presenting Cameroon. You see the map of Africa. And if you look that uh, yellow part of the continent, you have Cameroon uh, in that Gulf of uh, uh, Guinea. Cameroon going from the shores of the Atlantic to the interior, to the center of the Africa, uh, to the lectured neighborhoods. So uh, from Cameroon, all the, all the distances are equal. So you have a, a, a country, but a country in a strategic geographical location 
in the in the continent. But it so if you have a military base in Cameroon, you have the same distance to North Africa, to East Africa, to South Africa. It is why many powers struggle and continue to struggle, uh, continue struggling to have uh, military bases in Cameroon, because from Cameroon you can control the whole of Africa. So you see, many people didn't uh, take it into consideration when uh, talking about uh, uh, this country or when talking about Cameroon. Many Cameroonians also didn't aware about that uh, specific geographical location. And if you take Africa as a head, Cameroon is the ear. Cameroon is the ear of the continent. So it is uh, very important to, to know about it. So Cameroon goes from the ocean in the South Atlantic Ocean to the Lake Chad at the center of, uh, uh, of Africa. And this geographical location plays a role, very important, important role in the history of that country and in the history of the continent. You have that geographical location, forest, you have savanna, you have uh, Sahel zone near the Lake Chad. You have also ethnic diversity related to that climatic and, geogra uh, and physical, geographical differences. You have cultural diversity, Bantus in the South, semi-Bantus in the West, and you have Sudano-Sahelian peoples in the North. So Cameroon presents itself as a summary of, of all Africa. You have Arabs, you have Blacks, uh, Blacks Africans, Sudano-Sahelian, you have Bantu and semi-Bantu people in the South. So it is a very particular uh, diversity. A, and if you visit Cameroon, it is like if you, you visit the whole Africa, you encounter the whole Africa. This is geographical specification, but it has uh, uh, prolongations in its history. If you want to talk about the history of slavery, we want to, we want to focus on slavery today. We have to know, we have to, we have to discuss about some definitions to understand ourselves what we are talking about. What is a slave? If we talk about slavery, what is a slave? We have many criteria that can define a slave. The first one is the orderness. If you look about slavery, about uh, the system of slavery, you cannot find people enslaving itself. They go out of the group. They go to the neighbors, to the foreigners. It is foreigners that everyone reduce in slavery, whether in Africa or uh, uh, to the other parts of the world. The difference can, could be tribal, ethnic. The difference could be a color. The, the difference could be in the culture as a whole. And as you know, the, 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 the difference of race, black, whites, the blacks and Arabs or yellows, all, all those differences have played an important role in the process of enslavement of the peoples. The slave can be defined also by uh, the, the, the criteria of uh, property. A slave, a slave belongs to a master. You cannot find a slave without a master. So the relation, the links of property is very important to define uh, a slave in its status. So how can you have that property? By capture, by purchase, by selling, by inheriting, by gift and so on. So you have all those criteria. So 
Uh, also, slave, the slave status is hereditary. You can transmit it, it is transmissible from parents to children. What it is the difference between new form of slavery who you have just uh, exploitation in prostitution, in the uh, traffics, uh, many trafficking, uh, traffics in persons, but you cannot inherit that stigma. In slavery, the, 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 uh, the, the transmission to, the, his, its, the, to, to his, the, the descendants is very important, hereditary. Slavery is hereditary. Slavery is transmissible to descendants. A, and uh, another specificity of slavery is that you enter by violence, capture, purchase, inheritance, and to go out to slavery, you have to pass through manumission. Espe escaping alone is not sufficient. Se uh, freeing itself by running, or going away is not sufficient. It is by the manumission, the affranchisement, that a slave regain some kind of uh, dignity, some kind of liberty. So the system of slavery is a very, a very large system, articulated areas of capture, areas of detention, means of transport, uh, of selling, uh, uh, ways of exploitation, uh, and the means of liberating. And in, 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 the, uh, in the vocabulary of slavery, you have a difference between a, a, free, a free person and a, lib a, a liberated person, the person to whom you give liberty and the, the person who is freeborn. So liberation, it is a process, a process uh, uh, dominated by the master. It is the masters who, who can give liberty, who can free a slave. But whether you are free or not, you cannot consider as a freeborn. It is a difference. Uh, so, uh, you have actors of the system at any steps. You have techniques of exchange. You have the, the, the ways or means of conditioning a slave. When a boot disembarks some slaves, they have to feed them. They have to, uh, to present them like a product in a, in a, in a market to be, to be sold. And you, uh, you know all those pictures, all those uh, 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 affiches to, 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 to inform that we have this uh, number of uh, slaves, this embark, and we want people to come to buy them. You have the trade, the trade, have the Atlantic slave trade, we are uh, talking about trade. Trade means is, is about means of acquisition, selling, purchasing, giving inheritance. So all the commercial aspect of slavery, and in slavery you have also. Uh, sorry. Uh, so when you talk about slave trade, you are talking about only one step, one stage of a process a vast system that is the system of slavery. So slavery uh, comprise also uh, the slave trade. So uh, when talking about the abolition, there is some confusion. What have been abolished? Is it slave trade or slavery as a whole, the whole system? And in uh, studying some, some parts of uh, uh, areas uh, uh, concerned by the system, you can find that uh, it is uh, the slave trade which have been abolished. Slavery will, uh, continues until today in many parts of the world. 
So what is the situation in that area that concern us, Cameroon, about slavery? In some books you can find, they are saying that uh, Africans were enslaved in the continent before uh, the trans-Saharan slave trade, before uh, the, the Atlantic slave trade. Facts are not uh, according to that vision. Facts contradict that vision. Africans, African religion, in Africa you cannot, you can't find markets of slaves, uh, selling of slaves, enslaving peoples, uh, at that scale has what we experienced with the Atl uh, transatlantic slave trade. Before the trans-Saharan slave trade, you cannot find any slave market in the whole continent before those exporting uh, slave trades. So if you talk about uh, you, uh, you, the case of uh, the Cameroon, on the coast, until the arrival of the Portuguese in the 15th century, you have so fishing peoples like this uh, the sawa the, and the, when you talk about sawa you have the dwala the izubu the bakweri so many 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 uh, ethnic groups uh, that uh, in that in that area migrating because they are not fixed they are migrating it is the colonial powers that will come and then fix peoples in the barriers of the frontiers. So you have all those peoples along the coast fishing and uh, 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 along the, the rivers with clanic structure. So the, a sort of extended families with the practice of uh, exogamy because they didn't take uh, women on the, on the group. They have to go on the neighbor uh, clans to take women and it solidifies links, it establishing peace and widening also the relations between different uh, ethnic groups, between different clans. So limited contact with the peoples of the forest. So if you consider the people of the coastal area, because you have that forest barrier, so they are in the coast, they are fishing, they are doing small farm, but uh, mainly fishing, and they, are, they have little contacts with the peoples of the interior till the beginning of uh, 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 this system of uh, capturing and then exporting people. So very limited conflicts also between those peoples. If you, talk, uh, if you take the other part of the country from Lac Chad to the edge of the forest, you have also fishermen around the Lake Chad and uh, along the rivers, such as Logon, Shari, the Benue, Vina, Mbere also. You have peoples farming, some farmers, whether you take uh, uh, the Wandalas, the Tulpuri, the Mundan, the Mofu, the Matakam, the Giziga, and also. So you have fishermen, you have farmers. You have also the birth of cities in that uh, northern part of the country uh, with uh, the Kotoko cities that descendants of the Sao around the Lac Chad. So you have the Musgums with uh, the obus with horse uh, homes. We can see some picture further. You have the Mboom chiefdoms, Mbooms who are the ancestors of the Tikars. Uh, those who have founded the Tikars were were booms at the beginning, and then they migrate to the south to 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 form the the, the Tikar chiefdoms, and later the Bamun and the Bamileke chiefdoms. So, in the political organization structure, you have the clans, the lineages. So, it, uh, the practice of exogamy also, uh, and also a rich material culture with uh, uh, the using of uh, fire, uh, the using of uh, ceramics, pottery, and uh, also. So it permit to develop some kind of architecture uh, and uh, handicrafts. So no evidence of slaves 
or slave markets in the social structure or in oral traditions before the introduction of Islam from the North because uh, it is uh, uh, Islam that begins in the North and uh, uh, in the South, the arrival of the Portuguese on the Atlantic coast in 1472 with uh, such a Fernando Po, it is a Portuguese who colonized that island which became to, uh, today uh, the uh, Equatorial Guinea, we know with the, that part of uh, 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 Bioko, which is former uh, Fernando Po at the entrance of the Vuri estuary in, in Cameroon. So before Atlantic trade, before the, the prolongation of the Trans-Saharan uh, routes to the South, we cannot find evidence of slavery or slave markets in all this area comprised uh, between the Lac Chad and the coastal area of Cameroon. So the Atlantic system developed from 1472 in the coastal area. It starts from the proximity. So the, the, the Portuguese took uh, some people in the coastal areas to the island, the island where they are settled and they uh, brought them to, uh, to, uh, to Portugal or uh, later they start to, to collect and then go to the other islands of the Atlantic and to the Americas. So the system started from the proximity and then grows to, to become the transatlantic slave trade with big embarkations, crossings, and multiplication of uh, destinations, and uh, also uh, 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 exchange from goods brought from Europe, from uh, the, 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 the Atlantic ports of Europe, whether in France, in Portugal, in Spain, go to the, 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 uh, the, the Great Britain, go to the, 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 the Holland and, uh, and also Netherlands. So it grows first Portuguese and Spanish, second French, uh, Netherlands, Sweden also, and last and the, the, the biggest, Great Britain, who, become late, okay, who comes later in the system but, uh, uh, but uh, uh, what I can say, uh, uh, have done it more in, in a bigger system than all the others. And, Egalima, uh, and also Britain is the, 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 the power, is the, the European country who has the best profits of of slavery, they sold slaves, they make profit, and also Americas were the colonies of British. So all goods product uh, in those areas go to go to Britain. It it can make you understand why the cities like Oxford, like Liverpool, like Bristol, and so on grow became very text uh, renowned. Uh, in the sharing, building sharing machines and all uh, and so on. You cannot, pro uh, uh, British, Britain are not producing cotton in, uh, uh, in England, but England became a center for the textile production and exploitation. And it is not a hazard that we have the industrial revolution in Britain, in British, in Brittany, because it is the country who made the huge profits of slavery of the whole system. And it is not an, a hazard where, uh, when they decide to abolish. Abolition is not a humanitarian decision. It is a very uh, economic decision because they experience the revolution, the industrial revolution, and then they decide to, uh, to, to, to forbid to all other powers to continue the trade. Why? They have to come to buy machines from Britain and then they make 
other profits in the, in, in the system. So we, the, the system start from the proximity to the transatlantic, and then we have a construction of a network, a process, which will uh, uh, include all the areas progressively. So at the same time, you have progressive transformation or previous practices and organization of circuits to satisfy the demand, which is expressed from, from the cost. You have this map of uh, David Eltis, and it shows you with the data collected, and you have it online, slave, slave, slave voyage point, uh, dot, uh, dot org. You can have it online, and you, you see, you can have all the documentation about uh, those ships. Uh, and this map is drawn about the data David Eltis uh, uh, found in his researches. So you have all destination. If you take from the coastal area of Cameroon, you can go to the Americas uh, and to the South America also. And you have all those uh, destinations from Cesar Big to Rio de Janeiro. Also, you have that work done by uh, Lisa Aubrey. Lisa Aubrey was part of the first uh, first group who have done his DNA and who goes to Cameroon with Art Jamers in uh, in 2010. And Lisa Aubrey is a, a scholar from the Arizona University. And when back to the America, she start with her students uh, to to identify the ships who embark people from the coast of Bimbia in Cameroon to different uh, destination. From Grenada, he have 26 ships. Sierra Leone, she have in, identified 18. Dominica, 16. Barbados, 16. Jamaica, 14. Martinique, 6. Saint Vincent, 6. Cuba, 4. Uh, Saint Kitts, uh, uh, 4. Antigua, 4 ships. But it is a study on the go, it is not uh, the end. It is the first findings of her research. So if you look at a map, the map of the, that coastal area, you have the, 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 the first living zone to the Americas from the Cameroon territory is the, that area of grass fields. The first port of exporting slaves from Cameroon is the port of Calabar, which is now in Nigeria after that uh, colonial partition. It is the biggest port where Cameroonians were exported at this time. You have also uh, that destination to Bimbia, along the Mungo River to Bimbia, also uh, along the Vuri River through Yabasi, to the banks of the Vuri, to Douala now, to island of Manoka, and uh, also along the Sanaga for the Basa people of this uh, uh, area, uh, not far away from, from the coast. So the Grassfield region have contributed a lot to uh, via Caraba and also via Bimbia and via the, uh, the Vuri. So you have those zones of capture, you have those areas of embarkment, those stars uh, in red, and you have those uh, itineraries where the, 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 the follows to go uh, before the, 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 towards the exit ports. You have uh, some pictures showing Bimbia, Bimbia is uh, the most known area in Cameroon, the most known uh, slave export uh, area. And you have those ruins in that zone. You have uh, that view in the Atlantic shores. Oh, you have some uh, boots uh, who came from 
the ocean and embark some people and to go to the Americas. So if it's to, to show you uh, uh, a list of uh, some centers in the coastal area of Cameroon, uh, you can have Douala, I have talked about it, Douala, Bonaberi, Manoka. In the Southwest, you have Bimbia, you have Nicol Island, Manoa Bay, Bota, Rio del Rey. In the South, you have Campo, Grand Batanga, Kribi, Dizange. Yes. And uh, uh, in Nigeria, you have the port of Calaba, who is in uh, integral part of the Cameroon system. You have Equatorial, Equatorial Guinea, which is just 60 kilometers to Douala. You have the island of Sao Tome and Principe. So all those sites are, are interlinked, are part of the, the system uh, of uh, transatlantic slave trade in the coastal area of uh, Cameroon. So you have your local, the localization and you have the importance uh, the role they played. Also, we have the Atlantic, but also we have trans-Saharan slave routes who come to that area, to Cameroon, and to some ways link to transatlantic because in the middle center of the Cameroon, you have the Benue River. Be Benue River is an affluent of the Niger. Niger uh, uh, cross the whole Nigeria and go to the Atlantic. So from the Benue, many slaves have been uh, taken and then uh, uh, conducted toward the, the Niger to the coastal area of, uh, of, of Nigeria. So you have interrelation between those two systems in that way. Also, transatlantic slave trade, uh, uh, trans-Saharan slave routes come till the central part of, of the Cameroon and took many slaves at the beginning of the 19th, 19th century with the creation of the, um, the Sokoto Empire. Sokoto, uh, Sokoto Empire was the biggest African empire in the 19th century. The biggest Sokoto empire in the 19th century with uh, two million and a half people, the, the Sokoto empire in the 19th century. And it extends till the Northern parts of Cameroon where it, uh, you have creations of uh, many, many other chiefdoms. And if you take the, the chiefdom of Ngaoundere, the Lamida of Ngaoundere, at the half and the end of the 19th century, Ngaoundere is the biggest contributor in slaves to the Sokoto Empire in the 19th century. You have around 10 to 20,000 people taken in that area to the Trans-Saharan routes at this time. We are in, at the 19th century around 18, uh, from 1830 to, uh, to, 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 to 1901. So, and uh, if you go back to history, we have a renowned uh, slave taken to Russia from the area of Logon Birni in the far north of Cameroon, Abraham Anibal. It is he, a prince of Logon Birni, captured in 1703 and taken to Istanbul before uh, to Russia. And he is the great grandfather of the famous Russian poet, Alexander Pushkin. And you have a, 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 Benin, a, Benin, a Beninian national, Jedone uh, Nyamanku, who wrote a bio biography of uh, Abraham, Abraham Hannibal. So the major turning points in that area was the foundation of that empire of Sokoto. 
so to give indication of routes and sites, you have uh, from Mubi in Niger Mubi Kano, you come to the Mandara area of Cameroon, the Bornu, the, 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 and then you come to the Adamawa. So you have many routes, routes of the north, route of the south, route of southwest, route of the east, route of west. So those routes are crossing the Adamawa region of Cameroon nowadays. And also going from Gaundere to Tinye, to Banyo, to Fumban, to Tibati, to Yoko, to Kunde, Bagua, Berberati, to Nola Karno, Bangi. Bangi is the actual capital of the Central African Republic. So till the, 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 the Ubangi River, you have the extension southeast of those routes linking to the Trans-Saharan slave route. So, uh, some words about resistance. All those systems, people can uh, have not accepted them, but they are obliged. It is by force, it is the using of violence. Resistance at the period of capture, resistance at the period of enslavement at any step. So, struggles, refusal to walk, revolts, running away, women and men too are uh, concerned. And uh, in some parts of Adamawa, people escape to go to the defense, uh, to the, in the mountains, in the graves, in, uh, or, uh, in, if you go to the Vute country, you can find some defensive constructions, some sort of walls by woods, to, to protect about the reds. You can find also the, the holes, I don't know how to uh, call it, uh, but uh, some fortifications. You have some big holes uh, centering the cities uh, and uh, that cannot be crossed by horses uh, uh, in some cities in the central part of, uh, uh, of Adamawa of Cameroon. Uh, I have talked about abolition of the slave trade. Yes, because I think what is considered and what you read and the reality is that they abolished the trade, but not the system. The system continued. And nowadays you can find some descendant of slaves, none has such and uh, with that uh, status. So in the colonial period, you have a sort of repression of, of the trade, so that the slave trade, but not interdiction uh, or abolition of slavery. So those who are already slaves remain slaves and colonial powers count on the extension uh, in, in time of the, of the system, but not, they have not taken a decision to forbid as a whole someone to, uh, 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 to say or to, to be recognized as a slave or owned by another one. So a, a modus vivendi, so uh, some kind of uh, uh, complicity between Europeans, the colonizers and the local chiefs, some sort of accommodation with the system because the chiefs are the only one who can mobilize, mo mobilize people and they start mobilizing in the enslaved people to the colon uh, for the colonial purpose. And uh, when I am doing some research in the Adamawa, when I ask why this, uh, someone told me that uh, everyone, the white men, says in the office, they quickly forget as soon as they get back home because all their comfort, the rooms where they live, the food they eat and all the functioning of their own houses are, uh, are shown by slaves given by the, the chiefs. Oh. Hello, uh, I have talked about some challenging questions. This is part of history. That history 
make uh, uh, give birth to a wide diaspora. So we have by this system Cameroonians around the world. I saw to Russia, to China, to Japan, to Americas, to Europe. In Europe, the, the diaspora started with, in that period of uh, slavery. It continues at the uh, colonial period. And also today, you know that after independence, African countries because, became uh, such as the, the, the open, open prisons because of the dictatorship uh, installed there at the service of former colonial powers. The name has changed, but the system remained. The, the system remained till today. What started at the period of slavery continues today. Africans, Cameroonians continue to, pro to produce goods for Europeans, not for themselves. When you produce cocoa, when you produce coffee, when you produce cotton, they are, those goods are for Europeans. In Cameroon, whether you have cocoa in the market or coffee, it is not a matter, uh, uh, no one cares about that. No Cameroonian can uh, be, be feel concerned because there is no, no cocoa in, in the market. But for Europeans, it is a problem. The economic system, economic system of the, the most African countries is, bar, is based till today on those crops for the sake of Europeans. So those countries cannot develop with that system. When you, you, you how can I answer? You ameliorate your production of cocoa. You have 10 tons this year. Next year, you produce 50 or 100 tons. Those who buy cocoa lower the, the price. You become poor and poor. Where, uh, 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 at the same time, you grow your production. You grow your, your production, but you become every time poorer and poorer. This is the system. At the period of slavery, who are those taken? The youngest, the, 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 the more uh, strength, they are not taking children. They are not taking all people. They are taking those who are in the force of age, those capable to cross the Atlantic, but also to be ready to serve in the plantations. They are not taking those who cannot serve them, whether men or women. But it is not only the physical force with it concern. They are taking those with some experience because from 20, 30, 40 years, you are at, at this age, you are the one who give your strength to develop your village. You are the one who can do farm. You can the one who can do fishing. You are the one who can hunt. You are the one who can forge. You are the one who can uh, do pottery. So they have those knowledge. Africans have the industry. Those who are taken have this knowledge, transforming iron to, 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 to produce weapons for the purpose of hunting, for the purpose of farming. Africa knows it before the coming of Europeans. Those who are taken are those forgers. Those who are taken are those with that knowledge and experience, medical knowledge, technical knowledge. Those who are contributing for the advancement and for the life of their society. It is those people who are taken. So it is not only the arms, but you have also the technology. You have also the knowledge which is taken with them. And it is all that, the, 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 uh, the traders, if you can call the traders, trade, I don't think it is the appropriate word. 
those who claim and take them, they take also all this part. And you can understand why after the, the, uh, that period, Africa is weakened, Africa is down, and Africa could be conquered and colonized again without any uh, resistance. Because all what is the power, constitute the power of Africa was taken at this period. The system continue in the colonial period. Who are brought to study to Europe? They, they choose the princes because they have in mind, if they come back, it is the next generation who will continue to rule and to serve the European powers. That all those who are taken at this period to go to study, few went back to Africa in the colonial period. And after the colonial period, it is the same thing. They give allowances. They said that uh, those who come to uh, have some diplomas in the system have to come to Europe to study and then come back to Africa to develop their continent. It is the argument, the reason advanced, but the reality is, is not there. When they come to Europe, they become technicians, doctors, and so on. But they give them post and the situation. They make the situation worse back at their home to, 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 to not encourage them to go back. It is the situation. All those who have destroyed Africa till today are, have the support of those colonial powers because they are at the service of those colonial powers. Those who rule African countries at the, uh, after the independence are those formed by the colonial system to serve the colonial system. Those who are against, who were against the system was killed if they have not been uh, integrated to the system. If you are reluctant to integrate the system, to serve the system, the colonial powers, you are in jail or you are killed totally. You have the case of Lubumba, you have the case of Umiobe in, in, in Cameroon. In Cameroon, all those who fought for the independence have been liquidated, have been killed. Independence was, was given to those who never fought for independence. And the situation made whom so that every Cameroonian dream to go abroad, to go to Europe, to go to America. And the situation has not changed. It is what we experience today. If you, I travel to France, when I come back, man, many persons ask me, man, why are you coming back to that prison, to that, uh, to, to that hell? Stay there and everyone struggling to escape to that prison, a prison constructed voluntarily by those governing leaders who have served the, 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 the slavery system, who continue to, who have served the colonial system, who have, who are continuing to serve the system like it exists today. So, why those countries like Japan, like China, like India are developed? Ask yourself this question. It is because of their diaspora. Japan is, it is from uh, the Meiji era. From the Meiji era. They have sent Japanese to Europe, to different European powers, uh, countries. They ask each Japanese send their to take the best he can find in France, the best they can find in England, the best they can find in America, and brought it back to Japan. And they use those knowledge to develop Japan. You have that huge transfer of knowledge from Western countries to Japan. And from the president of Japan, 
Western countries have decided that never again, never again we could accept that a foreign country, a color people, come study in our areas and, and we allow them to go back with our knowledge, with our technology, with our experience to challenge our economy, to challenge our powers. Japan become, became a power. And Japan uh, challenge Western countries in many sectors. Now you have China. China follow, follow the same system, the same case. China took with its diaspora the best of the Western and addition to its culture, to its uh, be, uh, traditional culture and uh, know-how. And then today, China is the factory of the world. You have the case in India, Indian diaspora today is research around the world in the, 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 the in many 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 domains indians transfer their knowledge indians transfer their diaspora to go to develop their country it is what they are doing and if you encounter a chinese in europe or in america you, you encounter an indian in those countries they are very proud of their culture. They are very, very proud of their country. And they, they affirm it, they present it to others. And all what they can do or can transfer, if they have to go back to teach in their universities, in their technical centers to give this know-how, they are doing it. So Africa, face of the, all this we have the first diaspora of slave uh, from slavery those who are taken from slave dispersed from brazil to canada to, uh, all in do, all those islands they are occupying many positions we have those went after during the colonial period of or uh, very recent recent period, decades they are thousands and thousands. If you take the case, or if you, can, you take only the case of France, you have a bigger number of Cameroonian doctors around Paris and in Paris, like in the whole Cameroon. Cameroonian doctors, medical doctors, and you can multiply in many domains. So Cameroon form doctors, they leave Cameroon to go to America. They leave Cameroon to go to all other countries. At the universities, it is the same. Every year we have many and many colleagues who are leaving to go to integrate uh, research centers abroad, to go to integrate uh, uh, universities abroad, or do, uh, for certain persons, to the lowest position they occupy in their country. Those who went to study abroad, how many of them come back, go, uh, go, go back to, to Africa, to Cameroon or to all other African countries? That is the question. So today it is the result of all what I have said, which represent the image of Africa we had. When we talk about Africa, the first idea is poverty, is hunger, is disease, conflicts, wars, refugees, corruption, dictatorship. We are all responsible of that. The others use their diaspora to resolve all those problems. What African are doing, African diaspora, what the African descent are doing, what whom they have better than Africa. So forces have been taken off and it is continue. It, it has not stopped. Resources are taken off year after year. 
cocoa, we, we export cocoa in Africa without transforming. We export coffee without transforming. Cotton without transforming. Our petrol, we export it without transforming. Or every good you export without transforming, you export your wealth, you export your jobs. If I travel through France, this city of Nantes, where I am here now, every, every big shop, you have various kind of, of cakes with, with, with cocoa, with our cocoa. Coffee, you drink it all the day. It, is, it creates jobs here. All those jobs that lo are lost from Africa, lost by African countries. So we export goods, means we export our forces, we export our resources, we export our development, we export our wealth. So those jobs taken is by those raw materials we are continuing to export until now, on, on, until which, which year? So only what in that system where we were engaged from the slavery period to now, we are developing poverty. Africa cannot be, cannot develop if we cannot inverse that process. In economics, they said, you have to reduce the distance between raw materials and, and factories. But for Africa, we go against all the economic laws. The raw materials are produced in Africa. The factories are in Europe, are in Western countries. That is the situation. So, if you take the map of Africa, Africa is the biggest continent. Africa is bigger than China. Africa is bigger than India. Africa is bigger than USA. You can put all together, Europe, India, China, USA, in the map of Africa, in that 30, 30 million square kilometer. All those countries, you can have them inside Africa. But if you see the maps we are using, you see a small Africa at the middle, you have Europe on top and you have America and Asia in the sides. And in your view, in your imaginary, Africa is, is very small. And it can explain the domination the others have in, uh, on Africa. So it is a, construct, a constructed idea in the mind. So we have to change our mind. We have to change our regard of our continent. And then we can consider ourselves and with that, uh, consideration we have to ourselves, to our continent, and then we can do all what is needed to its development. So Africa have all the resources. Today you have those summits, China, Africa, India, Africa, Turkey, Africa, USA, Africa, French, Africa. So every power, every country, who want to show his powerness, want to develop the, the only part of the world where everyone goes or regard to, 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 to take resources is Africa. Because we have the resources of the, the soil, we have resources or mineral resources, all kind of resources, we have them. So the problem is to link knowledge and those resources, because it is knowledge that produces techniques that can transform those resources to develop our countries and 
to make wealth. So the continent of the future, whether they like it or not, is Africa. The continent of the future is Africa. It is the only continent who is growing faster in its population. The only continent who uh, we get, we have all those res resources needed for the future. So Africans, peoples of African descent have to be aware of that, have to be understand that, and then decide to act according to that. The responsibility of the diaspora is based of many, many, many elements we can, we can evoke. How do you feel as African? Where you live, where you are? I think there is no continent where a black descendant or a black can, be, can feel at home like in Africa. In Europe, you face racism, discrimination. Whether you have the nationality, whether you have the competence, you have all techniques and dip diplomas at the time to find a job, you face differences. If you get that job in your everyday life at any time, they make you understand that you are not where you are supposed to be. You are not in your place. You are born in America. You are black. They consider that you are not Americans. Or you cannot have the same position, the same consideration as a white. Whether he came from Europe, from Ireland, from Britain, you, you are born there. Your ancestors are born there. But you are never considered as a part of where you live. You are not a part of the system. So every time the, the, the matter of discrimination you face is the racism and so on. When you talk about color, I used to ask, is white a color? Because for whites, the only color is black. The only color is others. White is not considered as a color. So it is constructed. Color people. And in, in the United States, you have the, 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 the one drop rule. If you have one drop of black, uh, black blood, you are considered as a black. You have the situation of Barack Obama. All his mother's family is American, is white, but he is considered as a black. And you see Trump uh, struggling to, 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 uh, to question his birth certificate. He's American. He's, he's born American. His grandfathers are American and white, but he is not considered American. What's the situation for those who are Blacks and who, and that their parents remain in Africa or came from Africa? You see the situation. As a Black, when I come to France, I am not different from a, 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 a Black French native from Guyana, from Jamaica. They consider me black as, as the same. We face the same racism in the supermarket. If they have to, if you are black uh, uh, near a white, they save the white before you. They make you uh, know it. I face it here is not in a supermarket. A young guy, uh, for him, it is uh, making me a very big honor to, to to, 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 to give my, uh, to, to, to help me put uh, on what I have bought in the supermarket, in the bag. I asked him why, why he does it for all those who pass before me, 
When I come there, no, you have to do it yourself. I am not obliged to do it for you. I ask him, what problem do you have with me? You see? So we face it. Whether you who are installed there, whether those who, is, who are born there, whether those who come there, you face the same, the same problems. You will never be at home out of Africa, is what I, am, I have understood. But those, the fathers of Pan-Africanism have understood it before us. The struggle to liberate Africa come from the diaspora. When you talk about Marcus Garvey, when you talk about all those who are the fathers of that movement of Pan-Africanism, Pan-Africanism is not born in, Afri in Africa. It is from the islands. It is from the diaspora, from the peoples of African descent in the diaspora. They form the idea that where they live, they are not at home. They have to fight to liberate Africa, liberate Africa for all African descent people to constitute the United States of Africa and then install a democratic system where all black peoples of the world can feel at home. It is the project of Pan-Africanism. Those who liberate uh, or proclaim the independence of uh, those small territories constituted our countries now, they are taking in the proclamation of independence as a, uh, as a whole, as the end. What is false? It is a step. They have to liberate every part of territory and then make it together like that non-divided Africa to form the United Africa before the partition, colonial partition, and then make a home, make safe home for all people of African descent. And if you look at the chart of African Union, the, 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 the diaspora is considered as a region of Africa. It is part of the chart of African Union, and it exists from the, uh, the, 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 the organization of African unity. It is written. So the project is not finished. It is only underway. Liberation, independence is a step towards the creation of the United States of Africa. That is the goal. Make a safe home for all people of African descent. So you are part of Africa. You have the responsibility of rebuilding the links. It is why I talk about the bridges. We have to rebuild the links from both sides, from where the Pan-Africanists have let it. We have to continue the, the, the struggle. The only way is to back to Africa, to back to the motherland. The only way is to change the course of the events. And it is by that or by this that you can make history leaving his wealth abroad, leaving his, just for his life. You, can, you are not making history. You can do it for yourself. You can do it for your family, but it is not a lot. We have a very important goal, a very, very important goal. And if you want to make history, it is to reconnect. Reconnect Africa to its diaspora. Reconnect all people of African descent to Africa. Make them feel responsible of Africa, of all what needed to be done in Africa. If there is dictators in Africa, it is also our responsibility. If there is nothing, if Africa is, uh, uh, there is poor and so on diseases, it is also our responsibility. We have to contribute 
we have to go to go back to help to resolve those those problems so why the return movement first to concretize the pan africanist idea of rebuilding that more uh, this modern africa the case for identity and origins if i am americans i know that my forefathers come from africa were from africa so the reconnection the dna it is in that case quest for identity your identity is african the names you borrow they are not your names they are just the names given to you or to your ancestors by the slavers all those names are not your names but what we have most important than our, uh, our name if you have a, a baby the first thing you think to give him is the name how am i going to call him you look for a name for him and you choose the best name you can find for him so the name is the first part of your dignity the name is the first part of a personality the name is the first part of our identity so tracing dna make or uh, look for our the, that identity look for our origins the origins of our forefathers it is our origin so it is more than a touristic voyage more than a hobby but it is a question of identity it is a question of dignity because name origin identity are what make out what we are who we are and it is what we can transmit to our descendants to uh, that identity the quest of, for human dignity yes when they took a slave it is uh, when he arrived the master decide to give him any name he wants and if you study the names given to slaves it is very problematic what kind of name what what is their signification what does they represent to them so very very question do uh, uh, some took their own name the, the name of slave gave to it, to his slave hmm? to enslave him too it is not his name so to reconnect with their origin and their african heritage it is one of the reason to rediscover certain african cultural elements we know that what make us different what is uh, our 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 identity is our culture if i cannot borrow the identity of my neighbor of the other it is not mine i cannot be whether i speak english or french like a brit a britain born or french national i cannot be french i cannot be britain i cannot be american what makes me different what makes me what i am is my culture it makes me uh, give me my dignity my difference but it is what i present to others and uh, many times i uh, with people say uh, they ask you how can you spell or call this thing in your language they know i speak french they speak french but they ask me the name in my language so for them french they know it is not me it is not part of me it is just something i borrow to the colonial master and i was uh, it is a sort of burden i was obliged to to hide in my head or all, uh, all my life just to 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 communicate to, uh, to to communicate with others and with the colonization it became 
a necessity. Also in the same house with my brother, I have to use French. I have to use English to talk to him. With my children, with my daughters, I have to use the language of others to talk to them. What a problem, what a pity for us, for Africans, for our culture, for our dignity. I cannot talk to, to my son or to my brother when I have a stranger because I lost my identity. I lost my language. What makes me what I am, what I can share with others, what with what I can enrich others, I lost it. You see, because of this, because of all those influences, colonial and religious also, to all those. So it makes me feel insecure psychologically, physically, and so on. We, are, we have nationalities, we have rights, but we are insecure psychologically. The, uh, the way of others, the consideration they have with us, we are not feeling secure in those countries. So to discover certain African cultural elements is very important. It is important for expression of, of our pride or being black or are being Africans. So I finished by those pictures of one uh, uh, of the diaspora who come back after tracing his DNA, uh, uh, Lilian Turam, a very known uh, footballer in France from the islands. He come back to, to Cameroon after tracing his DNA in uh, last January, last January, and he was received in his uh, community of origin in Douala, and uh, they, they give him titles and uh, ennoblish him and uh, receive very, very, very warmly. You see how, uh, what is shown is the pictures. And the mayor of Douala also received him and give him of a, a diploma of citizenship of the Douala city. So all those who need, who want to come back, I think they will experience that. And uh, anytime they will feel at home and uh, the better, uh, I think, uh, uh, from the, where they are. So to conclude, I have taken many, many times I know that uh, many of, all of you have many other appointments. So the slave trade marked a major turning point in the evolution of the African continent and its societies. It is a very, very turning point. Many habits we face today are acquired at that, uh, at that period. Consumption, uh, education, uh, behavior, many, whether in our nowadays uh, living or in our behavior, our psychological uh, uh, mind also. So any, the period of slavery mark also the militarization of our societies. What justify imperialism, occupation of African so colonization. Colonizers said they come to, to stop fightings between, between tribes. Who made those tribe fighting? They didn't say it. Predation. So taking, taking, taking from Africa without giving nothing to Africa. Domination, extraversion, exchanges before colonization, before that era was sent at the center. The Sahara Desert, was a very big highway of trade till the colonization. With the arrival of the Europeans, all the interior was abandoned for the coastal areas. Today, when you take the map of Africa, all the biggest cities in Africa are in the coastal areas. The routes, the main routes are in the coastal areas. The, the, the airports, the railway stations, 
And when you leave the coastal area to the interior, all that disappear. You can no longer have good routes. You can no longer have railways. You can no longer have planes and so on, airports. So all is done to take from the interior of the continent to the coastal areas to, or to, to Europe or to the or other parts of, of the world. So nothing for the interior, nothing to rest and to develop the Africa. So dependence of Africa, the problems of cultures, domination, impoverishment, all those problems are linked. The foundation uh, in, uh, from that period of uh, slavery. So with, with the growing interest in Afro-descendants in recent years through DNA testing, build a new bridge across the Atlantic because I'm talking to Americans, but uh, it is across the Indian Ocean too, mm? the Mediterranean Ocean, the Red, uh, the Red Sea. It is all around the Africa and from the other parts of the Africa. So many bridges have to be established, to, to be built, to, to make, to back this African diaspora. And it is at this condition, I, I think it is the only which can permit to Africa to represent what it represents to the world, to the humanity from the beginning. We all know that Africa is the mother of humanity. All human beings comes from Africa, all from the beginning. So responsibility is on, on us, all of us, all black people. And we have to make history. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Well, thank you, Professor. Honestly, that was amazing. You know, everything we I just I just learned there. You know, it, it just here. Yeah. So um, I don't know if anyone got more question, but we'd love to to close the meeting. And then, uh, if anyone uh, got more question, you know, Professor, I've sent his, his uh, Insta bio link on the chat so you can contact him. And then he's also, uh, he sent me a book okay. today. It's, uh, it's a really, really good thing about uh, everything he spoke about. So we're looking to actually yeah. translate that in English so we can, yeah, go ahead, brother. Yeah, uh, yeah, you send it to me. I'm going to take my time to read that book. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyone got anything to add? So we got uh, probably about five minutes before we can close everything. I'm just going to say uh, thanks to Stephanie. She's been watching the show from the start. And then she said thanks, Professor, to uh, explain and make a difference between slave trade. Let me just go back on the question again. So she's been watching the show from the first minute. She's on Facebook. So she said thanks for the difference between slavery and slave trade. So she's saying to Professor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. And uh, very interesting. And uh, I'm ready. I am. I am available. So don't hesitate to contact me for discussion. And in Facebook, if you look for my name, you can find my page. So you can. We can continue. And uh, you can contact uh, Monkam also to have all uh, WhatsApp and so on. So uh, feel free to contact me at any time. So no problem. So I'm very, very, very happy to meet you today. And uh, I'm ready for a next session or another session. So I am part of the family. So feel thank free you. Thank to contact you. me at any time. Thank you very much. Are you sure that because we're going to contact you for the next session? Because I mean, we, we gain a lot, lot of knowledge. I mean, me myself, <laughs> Me too. So I, I get a lot of knowledge. <laughs> and again, I'm I'm I happy, you know, Brother Monte, to yes. be here all the time to support the, the, the movement. And Brother Elon, you know what? You just you just so amazing. And Sister Aventi, she's always been there from day one. Yeah. You know, she's never missed one day. So thanks a lot for the support. And then that's how you can grow. Brother Mwamba, I know you're still there. So uh thanks a lot, all the way from Scotland, you know, and then 
you're here with us. And uh, we got brother, uh, is it Lawrence? Thanks again. Thanks again. Thanks very much. Justin, you know, it was glad to, I don't know how I actually contact you. It was through your Facebook. You know, I was looking for a video, uh, camera video, because I, do, I normally take camera video every day to see what's a new video, what they're talking about. So I end up on your video. I was like, that's actually good. You know, the way you present your video uh, and then I contact you directly. So that's how we you reconnect. And there you are. So uh, honestly. How to, how to say thank you in full full day? <laughs> Usoko. Usoko, Usoko. Voila. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love that language. I used to, when I was in Cameroon, I had a good friend, good, very good friend from, from, ah. your, from your tribe. Yeah. Okay. But I, I forget everything. I, I just know Jam... Uh, jam uh, wait, jam, no, no, Jamna. Jamna? Jamna, uh-uh. Jamna, and you, I know... Um, ah, there's another one. I forget, I forget everything, man. But it's a beautiful <laughs> language, man. Yeah. Also cool. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Fufu is, uh, okay. is, uh, is a Fulani, is it? Yes. Okay. Fulani. Mm -hmm, right. mm -hmm. So that's a, very, that's a very massive tribe. You know, you go all the way yeah. from yeah. Cameroon, Nigeria. 15 countries uh, in Africa. Guinea. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what? Up until this point, I thought Osoko was T-Car for thank you. But I know the T-Cars use a lot of um, Fulani words yeah. in their language. Fulani words. That's true. So mm. I thought Osoko oh, was Tikar for, for thank you. But now I see that it's um, Fulani. Yeah. Um, when um, Tikar say that they're fine, they say uh, Jam. And I know that's Fulani as well. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. See, when we go in our languages, man, we start seeing these yeah, connections see. and it's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna add Professor in our reconnected group. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna add him because obviously if we got a question anytime, you can just yeah. put your question okay. through. Thank you. And then it's gonna be, and again, I'm, I'm looking at to actually uh, extend the group to more like a camera recon. I don't know what you guys think about it. Let me know, you know, to kind of, kind of like, uh, remove uh, the trap thing and everything, just put it as a camera reconnection and anything like that. So we, 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 we talk about it. We talk about it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys. And uh, thank you I'll guys. talk to you next time. Thank Thanks you. again. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay. All have a blessed, blessed day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Incredible we are. Incredible we are.